hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Just say hallelujah, hallelujah, whatever it is, just say hallelujah. Speak it into the atmosphere. There is nothing the enemy can do in this season, in this time. There is nothing that can distract us. There is nothing that can take us out of God's hand. Hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Go before us, God. Hallelujah. Set the atmosphere. Be in this place, oh God. Meet people where they are, God. Hallelujah. See our hearts, Jesus. See our hearts, Jesus. Let us not be blocked by the pain that is stopping us or in our way, God. We just, we just edify. We lift your name in this place, God. We fight back with the word in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, Unity. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning. If you feel up to it, go ahead and stand to your feet this morning. We are going to worship God and we are going to declare his word this morning. We are going to sit, not just sit with, but declare Proverbs 3 this morning. How many of you know what that says? We're going to write it on the tablets of our heart. Why do we do that? Right, we have to write it down. So Raya actually asked on Thursday, why do we hide? I asked her before I brought this up. But why do we hide the word in our heart? Why do we do that? But it's because when things start to happen, we have something to pull from. We know when we eat things, whatever we eat comes out of us. If we eating the word, it's going to come out of us. In those situations, in those circumstances, in those relationships. If we write the word on our heart. That is what's going to come out. And we do it what it says. Hallelujah. So can we worship this morning? Can you declare for yourself that you will write it on the tablets of your heart this morning? Amen. 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 All right. It's a fun song, too. So we get to worship and praise and be excited that we have the opportunity to write it on the tablets of our heart this morning. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, let's go. Hallelujah. It just says, and I want y'all to say it with us, all right? This first round, just say it with us. This is where we declare it. Amen? Yeah. 
There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence lord for yourself. Say I've tasted and seen. I've tasted and He's seen. He's the sweetest of love. The sweetest of love. My, heart my heart becomes free. And my shame, and my shame is undone. It's no more in your presence. Your presence oh, so we say hope. Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Oh, come, come to this place and fill the air. It's your glory, God. Your glory, God, is what our hearts want. To be overcome. To be overcome by your grace. Oh, we say, Holy
Saturate us, Lord. Saturate us, Lord. Saturate us, Lord. Saturate us, Lord. to him. Come flood this place. Oh, your glory, Lord. Bless it, Lord. To be overcome. Bless your name, Father. Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, we bless the Lord by your presence, by the We're overcome by your presence, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Oh God, we glorify you. We magnify you. Oh, the hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you're faithful. Thank you, Father. Oh, your presence, your presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's continue in a, a, a heart of worship unto the Lord. And let us find someone to pray for today. Amen. We don't want anyone to leave here without a word of prayer. Let's f look for someone to bless, someone to pray for. Listen to our Father as he tells you what to pray for. Let's pray for one another. And those of you who are at home, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you today. We glorify the name of Jesus. And we ask that, oh God, you minister to each one who's watching today. In the name of Jesus, minister to their every need. In Jesus' name, draw them closer to you, Father. In the name of Jesus. We bless the name of Jesus. We thank the Lord for his goodness. We thank the Lord for his grace. We thank the Lord for his mercy, which endures through all generations. We bless the Lord. Amen. We bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. I just want you to sing with me this little chorus. God just gave it to me, okay? Bless the name of Jesus. Oh, blessed be, blessed be the name of the Lord. Sing it with me. Blessed be, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be, blessed be the name of the Lord. Sing it. Blessed be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be, blessed be the name of the Lord. One more time. Blessed be, blessed be the name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be, blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for singing with me. We sang to him. 
we bless him we honor him we glorify him because he's worthy amen now as they continue to, as the musicians continue to play i want you to ask the lord what would he have you give in the offering today because we want to worship him through our giving amen so ask him and then once you have your offering please stand even if you don't have anything monetarily to give you have your heart to give amen and you give with a joyful heart so i'm going to ask you to stand hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord blessed be hallelujah thank you jesus blessed be the name hallelujah we're going to pray right now father god we thank you thank you thank you for your goodness thank you for being here with us father thank you for the opportunity to give unto your kingdom lord so that your your glory to, so that you can be glorified and we ask that you multiply the gifts and minister to the giver Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, we say amen. And follow the directions of the ushers. And those of you who are at home, you can join in. Just go to our website, ucjc.org, select giving and follow the prompts. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. We want to see you. <laughs> we want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Help me say.
the Lord. He's good, isn't he? Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Let's give him our best. How about that? Let's give him our best. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're good, Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. We have a faithful, faithful, faithful Father. Amen. Amen. Now, this is a part of the service I really enjoy. I, on behalf of Pastor McKenzie, Sister Sharon, I want to acknowledge our visitors. Unity, don't you want to see who's here today? Yeah. Amen. So visitors, we have any visitors, please stand. That's, that's all we're going to ask of you. Praise the Lord. Let's give them a big hand. Amen. Amen. Please continue standing while our ushers get, hand out visitors packets. And uh, inside the packet is a white card. We ask that you fill that out and then turn it into the basket on your way out this af afternoon. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. And please don't hesitate to join us again. Let's give our visitors another hand, please. Praise God. Now, you know we're celebrating African American History Month, right? And we have a phenomenal presentation today. Amen. Just in addition to all of the other phenomenal presentations we've had so far. So we're going to ask uh, Pastor Sharon McKenzie to come forward and introduce our, our guests. Good morning, Unity and friends. My name is Heaven Thomas, a member of UCCM, our campus ministry. And today we enjoy privileges because of the sacrifices made by, made by many who dare to dream and stand against racism, segregation, disenfranchisement, Jim Crow laws, and socioeconomic inequality. There have been dreamers who's, who faced extreme obstacles, pressing towards civil rights for African Americans. This morning, in honor of African American History Month, Sierra, Gabriella, Vincent, Alana, and Christiana, representatives of Unity Christian Campus Ministry, will present a piece written by, written by Pastor Sharon McKenzie, a native of Mississippi, who experienced these racial disparities firsthand. Ladies and gentlemen, the dreamer's dream. We've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He never failed me yet. And oh, 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 oh can turn around. We've come this far by faith. I am the dream. 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 We are the dreamer's dream. Breathing, living, manifestation of the dreamer's dream. Never give up on the dream. We are the dream. Now, sitting together on cushion seats, whining and dining in eloquent places, 
paid for by the dreamers who endured the pouring of hot coffee and soup, ketchup and mustard, milk and milkshakes on their heads, flowing down, 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 flowing down like anointing oil to their feet. Then dripping, dripping on down to us, the dream, giving us the privilege to eat and drink together anywhere, sitting side by side, touching elbows in integrated settings, not being denied, purchased by dreamers who suffered vicious dog bites into their soft, precious flesh, then enduring the force of high-powered hoses bashing against their faces and chests. We, we are the, the dreamers' dream. dream. Free to exercise our right to vote as five-fifths citizens, a full human being, because of battles fought by dreamers whose flesh reflected the beatings of blackjacks, dreamers who felt the painful, burning sensation of shredded skin dragged across hot concrete and asphalt, then ushered into a welcoming paddy wagon door, <laughs> ready to take them to concrete floors with bars and locks, dreamers who marched in hot, humid weather on dangerous roads and highways, which sometimes led to heaven through a premature grave. We are the dreamers' dream. Now, with opportunities for a better education, flourishing and thriving, no more outdated, hand-me-down, biased books, an old secondhand scratched-up desk, delivered from a segregated school on the other side of the tracks. We are the dreamer's dream. Able to hold our heads up, looking man to man, woman to woman, man to woman, woman to man, kid to kid, directly, eye to eye. God's window of the soul. Eye to eye, without the fear and threat of being hanged on the nearest pole. This gift of equality and respect, bought and paid for with the prayers the blood, and the lives of many dreamers who rose above their own personal fears, laying new opportunities at the feet of a possible dream. Can't you see them marching through the jeering crowds being spat on? Derogatory statements screamed viciously at them out loud. Look how they stood against insurmountable odds of prejudicial hate while they searched for new ways to modulate new tones and new voices to penetrate and open the gates to freedom for the dream. We are the dreamer's dream. Will we take the dreamer's dream for granted after all their suffering and despair? Will our lack of vision, love, and humanity reverse the dream into a living nightmare? Programs and tributes are good things indeed. When it opens our hearts to God's greater needs, the dreamer's dream. Alive. 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 In you and me. Re Reflect on its reality. Wake, Wake up to, to its responsibility. responsibility. I am the dream. 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 We are the dreamer's dream. Breathing, living, manifestation of the dreamer's dream. With every new generation, new dreams arise, and others become the dreamers. So with the help of God and mankind, let us never, ever give up on the dream. You come this far by faith. Sing it with us. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting, trusting in his holy word. We never fail me yet. And oh, oh, oh. Oh, can't turn around. We've come this far 
by faith. Amen. Wow. I'm going to come up here and say, I am the dream. And I, and I challenge all of you at some point today to say that. I am the dream. You're not too old. You're not too young. Amen. Somebody, thank you. Somebody thought of you when they were going through. So somebody thought of you when they were going through. And I would love a copy, a print copy of that. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Jeanette. Nice to see you again. And I'm here with your morning announcements. And I'm going to be brief. I say it every time. This time I mean it. I think. There, a reminder that there is a financial meeting after church. Right when we're done, you tiptoe on to the multipurpose room. There's some chairs set up. We will be brief in this meeting. I'm anticipating brevity. Uh, but we will be talking about some budgetary things and also voting on some changes that need to be made to the bylaws regarding the treasurer reporting requirements. So after church, after your time of prayer and worship and ministry, just, you know, head on over there, chat for a few minutes, and our meeting will be brief. Encounter. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Encounter is a time where we get into some deep worship and praise and prayer, seeking God together in this space. Our next encounter will be next Sunday, February 25th, 6.30 p.m., and our dear brother Femi yeah. will be sharing a message that will lead us into a time of pressing even deeper into God's presence in response to the teaching. That's a great photo. Is he here today? That's a great photo. <laughs> uh, the Keystone Family Alliance supports vulnerable children and teens and those who care for them through adoption and foster care. They invite everyone to their free event on February 20th, which is this Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. at the Penn Stater. There's gonna be a buffet, so they're gonna feed you first, feed your bellies first, and then feed your minds with more about their ministry and the work that they do in our community and across uh, Pennsylvania. There's flyers on the table, there's a flyer up there. There's a code you can scan, or you can go to the website to register so they know how much food to have ready. Keyfam.org slash events. Got it? Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, and so we'll have our next leadership session with Bishop Courtney McBath. Yeah, you can. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're excited to have him here March, 22nd, oh, March 23rd and 24th. That's the Saturday and the Sunday. Uh, Bishop McBath is an MIT graduate who carries decades of leadership experience in the church in a variety of ministry roles and working with Fortune 500 companies. So he is well-versed in the leadership realm, okay? He'll be here Saturday for our leadership wineskin starting at 9.30 a.m., and this is open to all UCJC leaders and anyone who serves in a ministry. Please, Pastor Mack and Pastor Ephraim are asking you to please take advantage of this opportunity on Saturday morning and register at ucjc.org slash McBath. I think that's up there. Yeah, it is. Um, and then Sunday, the 24th, he will lead our service um, and, preach, and preach the word. So we want to show up both days if you can, and receive all that he has for us that he's bringing to us, okay? Amen. Um, now we will have an uh, announcement from Sister Darshell and Brother Femi, maybe. Oh, here they come. Okay, while they're on their way, I will remind uh, Children's Church will be dismissed after the song of prep. Why are you can stay in service today. And the family room is open and service is streaming in there should you have that need with your little one. Amen. Good morning, Unity family. Okay. Femi and I, I'm Darshel Raw. And, and I'm Femi. Femi. 
Um, we're here on behalf of the new members ministry. And what we're before you for is to announce the church survey. It's an attenders survey that um, we put together. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs> Let me slow down. Okay. And so um, who the survey is for? So the survey is for all those who have been attending Unity um, for five years or less as well as those who have been attending Unity six years or more. And we're asking that everyone, starting from the age of 12 years old and above, to complete a survey. We want everyone's input. So you may be asking why, why a survey? So Femi's going to give you the heart of why um, this came about. <clears throat> Thank you, and yes, the why is pretty much, we want to get into y'all's business, I'm sorry. I'm just joking. Um, the real reason is we have last year been blessed by the ministry of Pastor Mac and who took us through the whole concept of being shaped for ministry and the idea that we are all on this personal journey as disciples, right? And he encouraged us that there was both a collective responsibility and a personal responsibility towards discipleship. We've heard a lot about the personal and uh, we myself and uh, Darshel had this crazy idea of how can we as unity um, take ownership of our own responsibility in this process of discipleship and we thought we'd ask y'all um, pretty much because I think if y'all remember the scripture in Acts where um, there was a complaint made out about the lack of care given to widows and that process or the awareness of that process led to the choosing of the seven, one of which was Stephen. And so if we don't know, or if they didn't know, they might not have been a Stephen. Yeah. And so now we'd like y'all to tell us, how can we come alongside you? Many of you have been members for five years or less, six years or more. And of course, that in between, if you're five years plus, then you fall into the six years or more, just in case. <laughs> but some of you have been here for a while, and we just wanted to know, is there anything we can do to help you take the next step in taking ownership of what God would have you do in this place? You're not just here to sit and listen. You're here because we need you. You're here because Jesus needs you. You're here because you're a major part of his body, and it's time to take your place. And so we just want to help you tell us, what can we do to encourage you to do that? Is there anything that you need a little bit more encouragement for? And it's a very short survey. We're not going to ask you any SAT questions. It's going to be nice and easy. And uh, hopefully you're encouraged to just be open. It's a safe space. You don't have to put your name or anything in there unless you want to. But uh, yeah, that's why. Yes. And that you are loved. And we want to embrace you and make sure everyone in the body is being taken care of. So where do you go? So, no, before I go, yeah, let me just show you, um, explain to you where you go for the survey. Um, you go to the church's website, ucjc.org, um, and at the top right corner, um, there's a drop-down menu, and select announcements. And under the announcements, there's a link that says attendee survey. Select that, and then from there, there's going to be two surveys you can select from, and again, that would be for all attendees that have attended five or less years, and then those that have attended six or more. Um, and also, we're asking that all those, again, 12 and above, fill, um, fill out a survey. So the time frame for this survey is going, it starts today, and you have all the way up until March 31st to complete the survey. So we want to thank you in advance for supporting us. Okay? All right. Thank you. Good morning, Unity. Good morning. I have the distinct pleasure. <laughs> Somebody who grew up with us. 
<laughs> I have the distinct pleasure. I'm excited and nervous and all that because um, I want to introduce my brother, Jason McKenzie. <laughs> and um, he's going to offer a song for our song of preparation this morning. This is an original, something he wrote. Um, I just want to say publicly that I'm very, very proud of my brother and the journey he's, he's been on. He's a man who loves God, um, who's continuing to grow. Um, and again, it's just great having him here. He, he and his family live in uh, Kansas City, Missouri. But again, we have the honor and privilege of uh, worshiping with him this morning. So welcome, if you will, my brother, my big little brother, <laughs> Jason McKenzie. Give it up for Brother Curtis. Save the day. How you want this? It's such a pleasure to be here. I've been out. Well, I've been away for a while. It's always home. I'm going back home. My mama, my daddy. <laughs> Is my guitar coming through? So, um, so I'm gonna go after that poem, Mom, because. Even we had a conversation yesterday. Um, this song is named I, I Will Remember. And just talking about your history and what the Lord has done through the hard times and the things that you, the messes that He's shown Himself faithful through. And that's what this song is about is looking back to the mercies of our God. It's out of, it comes from out of um, Deuteronomy 8 when the Lord says, Remember the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, who took you through. The, the desert of the wilderness to humble you. And this song reflects the journey of Israel, which kind of mirrors our journey as well. So. There was despair all around me So many chains were around me And all I could offer was a cry It's when your heart pierced through my darkness Your heart saw my sorrow Deliverance was coming in the fire Yeah, your word was implanted And your mighty hands commanded With signs and wonders he arrived Yeah, but my oppressor wouldn't let go Turning me back to what I had no, in fury he would concede to the lie. Uh, but your covenant will not be broken. Your mighty voice is spoken. You say your freedom will not be denied. Oh, I will remember you and how you. taught us mercs I will remember you the way you show me love how you delivered us now rejoicing in your victory you sing there's a journey that to give me refining is revealed What's inside? Oh, yeah, I will remember how you rescue. You're the 
the same in testing or in blessing. You're faithful to bring us to the other side. Whoa, and I will, I will remember, remember you and how you brought me out and how you taught us mercy. No, I will remember. scripture you know very well is of two sisters and a brother it's in John 11 and the we know the brother died his name is Lazarus and then Jesus came and we restored what was lost and he brought hope and life we know that story but in the next chapter in the Passover Mary and Martha were there and Lazarus there and then something happens I believe something rose up in Mary, who just had their brother restored back to him, her. And she decided to get a spikenard, costly spikenard, in that moment. And she said, I'm going to pour it out on the Lord. I believe she remembered the goodness of the Lord who restored an awful situation to her. And what her response was to pour out, to pour out something so costly to the Lord. So I sing out the Lord like that woman. I'll pour it out, pour it out on you. Shake it out, my Pour it out on you. Oh, this is our response to you, God. For that treasure, help me to give it all, give it all to you, Lord. Give it all to you. Like that woman, I'll pour it out, pour it out on you, Lord, pour it out on you. This is my heart now, Lord, receive it, God. And for that treasure, I'll give it all, give it all to you, oh Lord, give it all to you. I will remember, I will remember. I will remember you 
the way you show me love but how you delivered us off of your worship now let this be a moment of worship we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony somebody's been delivered in here let the response be a heart of worship a life offered out a life offered out one more time i will remember you and how you brought me out yes lord and how you taught us mercy father i will remember you god the way you showed me love yeah how you delivered us what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of jesus what can make us whole again nothing but the blood of jesus lift your voices here we're singing oh precious is the flow that it makes me white as snow there's no other found i know there's nothing but the blood of jesus one more time sing oh singing oh precious is a flow is that makes me white as snow oh, no what a pound I know is nothing but the blood of Jesus one more time nothing but the blood is nothing but the blood of Jesus one more time is nothing but the blood nothing but the blood of Jesus, bless your name, bless your name. Turn to your neighbor and say, There's no place that you are that he cannot reach. There's nothing you've done that he cannot redeem. There's nothing but him. Hallelujah. Think about that again. There's no place that you've been, no place that you are that he cannot reach. There's nothing that you've done or will do that he 
cannot and has not redeemed. He is so good. We are so grateful today. Father, I thank you for your presence here. I ask that you just let me be a vessel that you can flow through, a conduit that you can share your heart and your principles through today to your people. I ask in your name, Lord Jesus, for your glory, Lord Jesus. Amen. I am been really blessed this weekend. Um, as a, it's always as parents, Sharon and I get excited when our children come, and we have them all here. And so we've been really, it's just just sitting, and, and they love each other very much. And so it's always a blessing just to watch them interact with we, in each other and, and with us. And Shani was away for a while. And we thank the Lord for what the Lord is doing through the True Girl Ministry. I think they said so far they've been out on the road for like a week and a half, two weeks. And they've been, seen, I think, 52 salvations, I think you said something like that. 60, I mean, of young, young ladies. And, and so that's a blessing. But it was exciting. Uh, when she came home and then so we had almost almost the whole crew together and we just made Miss Athena and she's back in Kansas being the wonderful mom that she is Um, so but I'm I'm excited but um, earlier and and again as the the group and you all did a wonderful job sharing the peace the dreamers dream and in that in that day, even though the country did not realize that, that we were a broken country because of racism. And God, many, many of the women, men, women and men and boys and girls who took part in those marches and sit-ins and hazarded their lives for a dream of equality, they were following God's dream. And God planted them in a broken world to be a light for what his love could be. Are you hearing me? And God was pleased. They had the honor and the blessing of of being agents of God in a broken world at that time, in a broken United States at that time. Well, if we fast forward to today, if we look at it, and, 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 and it's not that racism itself has completely disappeared, but when we look at our world, there's so much, and we look at our culture here in the United States and maybe other places in the world too, there's so much brokenness. You young adults who are on the, uh, on the campus. Now, right now, thought is going on, and there are thousands of young people, young adults, uh, up at the Bryce Jordan Center. But how many more hundreds and maybe thousands are sitting in their dorm room depressed? How many are, are going and, and don't see, they're, they're, they want purpose, but don't know how to find it? And I have, but I have good news. I have glorious news. Amen. In this day, God has purposed a people. Yes. Just like he did in that, that day so many years ago and throughout his history. He's always purposed a people. He's purposed a people that he would be able to plant in the places of darkness to be agents of his life. I want you to turn, everybody in here, if you love, everyone who names the name of Jesus, turn and look at somebody and say, God, you, tell him you are, you are God's agent of light and life. Amen. Amen. 
think now, now I want you to think about that as they said it to you. Because you could, you could hear it but not receive it. You could hear it but not understand the, its impact. And the impact, because what God is intending, the impact he is intending, because God doesn't do anything haphazardly. He does not do anything without it meaning, meaning for it to have an impact. Because when I say that, that means that in Father's heart, he has set you and sent you to have an impact with his love and his light in the places where you are planted. So I want us to, to say that again. Look at that person again. And both as you tell it, declare it for them, but as they say it to each you're saying it to each other. As they're saying it to you, without any qualifications, I want you to receive it in understanding its glorious weight for your life. So tell them, you are. You are. Amen. An agent, An agent. of God's light, God's light. And, his and his love. I'm adding a little bit. Strategically planted, Strategically planted. to make an impact, to make an impact. for him. Amen. 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 And I want to, we've been, we've been talking and kind of beginning to, to round this out for a few weeks uh, as I've had opportunities to talk with you. We've been talking about standing in your authority. Um, and in most uh, these last few weeks, uh, positioning yourself to stand. Positioning yourself to stand. Uh, last week, I talked about to you about positioning yourself to stand in the day of deception. And I just want to take a, just a brief moment and just, just run down through a couple of the key thoughts that I shared with you last week. Positioning yourself to stand in the day of, de of, of deception and understanding that a world trapped in the deceptive schemes of Satan is not the problem. The problem is the amount of deception that has infiltrated the church. But we also, even as we see and understand it, that's serious because we are the answer, just like I shared with. And so if I am, if I am that thing that where light in life is meant to come through me, and I am strategically planted by God to do so, but I am deceived by the the schemes of the devil, my impact is diminished by the level of the deception I'm living in. Are you hearing me? So that's why so it's so important. But, but, I, but we also have the good news that you ought to know that even though that may be the, the adversary uh, ever works to undermine your life and your effectiveness for God, and your life in general, but you ought to know that God has equipped you to discern and stand against the devil's schemes. Amen. He's equipped you. He's, he's given you. He's given you the, the greatest thing that he has given you is his Holy Spirit. Yes. He has given you because the Holy Spirit, the, 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 the devil can never get one over on God. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is the, the discerner of what is truth versus what is false. What is light versus darkness is what is empowers you to stand against every work of hell that would try to undermine your life. And so he's given you your, his spirit. And then also he, he said, the Lord is saying to us, as you make a personal commitment to growing, if you he, he's saying, beloved, if as you make just not being satisfied with being saved, but as you make a personal commitment to Christ likeness and spiritual maturity, you're going to be you're going to be standing strong. And some key things, five key elements for for Christ likeness and maturity and spiritual growth are personal prayer and worship. I mentioned these to you and talked about them in detail last week. Reading and studying the Bible, receiving sound Bible based teaching, Christ centered fellowship, and walking 
with God, learning how to walk in communion and fellowship and a life yielded to God on a daily basis. Those are five things that help equip you to grow as, and in your growing help you to stand. Now, there was one other one. The other things amongst the other things I shared, one other thing I wanted to bring back to your remembrance, and that is also one of the deceptive works of the enemy that has crept into the body of Christ is that it is important that we remember to hallow the name of our Lord. We talked about that a little bit to, 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 to remember that our God is the almighty and glorious and all-powerful God, that his name is to be referenced because he is to be reverenced. And so to not fall into the trick from the enemy or the trick of our flesh to begin to take him for granted or to take his name or to treat his name without respect. Amen? Yes, so today, I want to continue to talk with you and I want to share with you five Five things that I, will believe, I believe, five principles and uh, ways of living that will position you to stand strong in what God has called you to. Amen? So the first thing I want to talk to you about is submission and obedience. Submission and obedience positions you to stand. Amen? Now, here... In Matthew 8, 9, paraphrasing, the, 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 soldier, the soldier says to our Lord Jesus, I am a man under authority. Now, I want you to, to, to hear this because he says, I'm a man under authority. Basically, what he's saying, I am under the authority of the Roman government. And I get my, if you want to know where my authority comes from, well, my authority comes from the Roman Empire. So whatever I'm carrying out, I carry with it the authority of the Roman Empire. Because I'm in alignment. I'm in alignment. I'm under those who are, have authority under me. Now, here's what I want to share with you in this principle. Spirit, I want to talk to you. That was natural, natural alignment. I want to talk to you for a moment about spiritual alignment. I want you to understand, beloved, that your authority is not based on how smart you are, how strong and how powerful you are. Your, your spiritual authority, your authority is based on consistent submission and obedience to God. Amen. Amen. It's based on consistent spiritual, I mean, uh, cons consistent submission and obedience to God. And by the way, all of you, those who want to welcome all those of you who may be joining virtually, God bless you today. Really blessed to have you with us. Here's what Jesus said uh, about being in line. You see, it, what, what I'm saying there is that I'm, I'm under uh, the authority of our Father God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And he, because I am under their authority, I'm in line for the power and the authority of the living God to be at work in, for, and through my life. I'm in alignment. Are you hearing me? But if I move out of alignment, the power, listen to me, if I move out of alignment, the power and the authority still flow, but I miss it. Are you hearing me? One of the ways I miss it is being inconsistent when it comes to obeying God and yielding myself to him. Here's what Jesus said. Here's what he said. He said, how can you call me Lord and not do what I say? Come on, somebody. Luke 6, verse 46. How can you call, how can you call me Lord? And, and we're living in a day where we need to be in alignment with God. So he says, how can you call me Lord and not do what I say? So I want to 
to have you have a, to have a check the heart moment. Are you naming Jesus as Savior, but not submitting to him as a Lord? Are you worshiping him, but you're worshiping him, but he's not Lord? He's not in control. And I'm going to explain what that means. Now, here's what it means. See, because, and, and it's interesting, these two words, because they're not sometimes in our world where we're free people. You know, uh, sometimes the most popular, the most popular words. But see, here's what, let's get right to it. Here's what submission and obedience is. Submission and obedience require that you give up your rights and die to yourself. Submission and obedience require that you give up your life and, and die to yourself. What does that mean? Break it down a little further. It means for you, it means for me, to place every part of your life before God as an offering to him. To place every part of your life before God as an offering to him. To use and direct as he pleases. What God is saying to me is saying, he's saying, Harold, you don't get to choose. Submitting yourself to me means you give up your right to choose. And you give up, in our, our culture, a, a, a big thing is self-determination. Is it, am I right? We have, we live in a free United States and we are free to self-determine. And God says, if you are a Christian, the kingdom supersedes the, the United States. And because you are part of the kingdom, you give up self-determination. You live by God determination. Are we having fun yet? But I, I'm saying this because it's important, because I want to be able to stand and, and to be in position to stand, to, be, to receive and to give and have the authority that God wants me to have. But I have to understand the only way for me to do that is to be in alignment. That means he's in charge. Are you hearing me? So today I want you to wrestle with, uh, I want you, and even after you, uh, an assignment for you, I want you to write this down. Who's in charge. Who's in charge? You, God, or me? I did not say who was saved. Yes, yes. I said, who's in charge? Ask him that question and listen for the answer. All right? Because I, I really do, I, now, I really do want him to be in charge, but I find out some ways where um, I, I need a greater level of submission and a, need, a, a greater level. The, the more I die to self, the more God can be manifest through me. And so I, I'm learning more how to give up my rights. Husbands, sometimes you, so God says, who's in charge? And sometimes being a husband, Ephesians 5, 25, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up. And sometimes giving, and, 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 and he gave himself, he died so we could have. And sometimes in, in a marriage, dying to self. On your job, but you, you, you understand what I'm saying. Okay, so you got that assignment? So here's the second one. The second, the second key to positioning yourself to stand, rejecting sin positions you to stand. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes, that, what, I, what am I saying? Resisting, the, making up your mind to resist any, any. Not to, see, I can look over there and say, I know that's a mess. Okay? But I'm doing things that are outside of God's will in my life. So it's rejecting any lifestyle. See, we, we, we are going to sin. That's why Jesus died, not for what I, just for what I did. He died for everything I was going to do. 
But I'm talking about a life that is consistently in sin in any way, shape, or form. The, what we call the nice ones or the not so nice ones. Any life, any, any mindset, any action that is outside of the will of the Lord. And see, what I have to understand is that sin undermines my ability to stand against the devil because what I'm doing when I'm walking is unrepentant, unrepentant sin. I am walking in his territory trying and fellowshipping with him while at the same time thinking I can beat him. You cannot beat him and fellowship with him at the same time. Yes, yes. He is not meant to walk by your side. He is definitely not meant to lead you. He is always meant to be under your feet. Yes. Hallelujah. So what do we do? James 4, 7. So what I've got to make up my mind, to, this is my job. Don't be calling on God and saying, God, just deal with the devil for me. And you can, but for, before you say that, say, you, make up, you, you make up your mind. Tell somebody, get a James 4, 7 mindset. That's right. He says, now listen, here's what it says. Humble yourself before God. Resist whatever it is, whatever thing it is, whatever attitude it is, whatever emotion it is, whatever way of thinking it is, whatever action. Resist the devil. And that, that, how many of us know that it, that's a real thing? Because sometimes you really want to, <laughs> sometimes you really want to go with the flow. Are you hearing me? <laughs> yeah, there's a flow going, coming up. And you want to go with the flow. Uh, hallelujah. But we have an answer. We have an answer. Bless the Lord. We have an answer. Glory to God. That answer is in John chapter 1, verse 9, because like I said, we make mistakes, okay? When you look at that, see, be, to tell, tell yourself, because so we need to speak to ourselves, be quick to repent. It's not about mistaking, you know, it, it, I don't want to be in the habit of sinning, but, uh, but the real key thing is being easily convicted and quick to repent, because here's the Lord's promise. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous so that he will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Tell somebody, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Be quick to repent. Be quick to repent. Your, your, your friend tells you something because they can, sometimes people can see us. God lets people see us. Your spouse tells you something. And, you know, because people know us and see us better and it's, they're right. And you and kind of part of the reasons that you can know the right is because how defensive we can tend to get when people are right. And and and, and so but instead of is it when the conviction of that wrong comes to your heart, be quick to repent and receive that promise. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Amen. Rejecting Rejecting sin. And another thing that is so powerful, important, third point is faith. Faith, faith is a key to standing in who God wants you to be. It's a key. It is a key, a foundational key. You see, let me share this with you. You cannot, listen, listen, it's hard to consistently walk with God without faith. It is hard to consistently walk with God without faith. Hebrews eleven six. You see, here's a thing, a little phrase that God gave me several years ago. See what, what faith looks like. See, you have to keep Purposing at more and more, keep, even when you're in times of great doubt and maybe feeling confused, you know, but it is, but listen, listen, here's what it is. I, here's my little thing, of, my little definition of faith. It is believing 
that God is who he says he is. He is who he says he is. That's where you start. God, you're all that you say you are. But it's also believing that he can do everything he said he could do. Amen. God, if you said you could do it, you can do it. I believe that. Everything you said you could do, you could do it. But there's one last part that is so important. See, because that's all kind of non-personal, isn't it? I mean, believe it's, per you know, but what I mean is that it's important that you believe that he is who he says he is and that he can do what he said he could do for you. You got to believe he is who he says he is concerning your life. You got to believe he can do everything he said he could do for, in, and through you. You know why? You know why? Faith is so important. Okay? Well, let me share this with you first. You see, another, uh, uh, connected to that believing is that, you know, God, believing that God is who he says he is, he can do everything he says he could do, he can do it for, in, and through you. But to know the thing that guarantees this for you is that Jesus, especially concerning your adversary, the devil, is because knowing that Jesus defeated the devil. I don't have to defeat the devil. Jesus defeated the devil. And I'm in Jesus, and he has given me authority. And when I say me, I'm talking about you. Okay, so knowing that he defeated the devil, and he has given you authority over him, over the devil, and authority, listen, authority to accomplish his will concerning your life in the earth. You've been given authority to do all that God wants you to do in the earth. Now, th think about that and in the context of faith, but it takes the onus. And the reason why I think it's important, because and why faith is important is this, because it takes the onus off of you, because it's important because accomplishing God's will and standing in that authority and accomplishing God's will in the earth is way beyond your own capacity. Yes, yes. There's no way you can do that on your own. I don't care how hard you try. The message in my heart is uh, to share is about grace. You see, so what everything God has set me in, set you in, everything he wants us to do, everything he wants to through, do for us is beyond. You are, the, the, the water where God wants to send you is too deep for you on your own. The assignments, I really wish you would think this way. That's why I keep preaching this stuff to you. I really want, when I say God has set you, I want you to know and understand. And if I, I figure maybe if I say it enough time, it's going to start to get in your heart that you will see yourself the way God is causing me to see you because he sees you that way. You are meant for the deep water. You are meant, listen, not somebody's name that is up in the light. I've said this to you before. Some legendary person. You're the legendary people. Okay? And that's why you need faith. Because there's no way you can get there on your own. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Are you hearing me? But here, here, here's what God said. He, uh, our Lord gave us a, another. He, he's so wonderful. Our Lord gave us another um, promise, Mark 29, 23. He says, all things. Here's what he said. Real simple, just a real short verse. All things are possible to those who believe. Faith makes everything possible. Faith in God makes everything possible. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know what he does it, it, with that word, uh, t the word possible? I, I was, when I was studying this, I, and, and I, this word, and I, I just say, Lord, 
just open up this scripture and was looking at it. The word possible, the Greek for the word possible is a word donata. Okay, it's a word donata. And what, the, what that means is having strength, power, and ability. And what, see, what faith does is releases the strength, power, and ability of Almighty God into your life to work both in you but all, and for you, but to work through you. That's why faith makes everything that God wants you to do possible. It does not matter how impossible it looks. Faith makes everything possible. So, who, who in here, God has told you something, and I, I well, we were talking on, on Tuesday. We were talking about some, some big stuff. Pastor, we had, a, we had a wonderful men's meeting. Amen. There's only four of us, but God was there. But we, I'm telling you, the presence of God was there. And we were talking about some big dreams. Things that aren't really possible, with, but they were stirring in the hearts of some of the men who were there. And God says, see, does anybody have a dream that kind of seems a little bit overwhelming and it won't let you go? And you, oh, oh, oh. and there's things you, maybe there's some things you've walked away from because they, maybe you don't, couldn't see yourself doing it. God just says, believe me. You don't, you, you, you don't have to, Letitia, you don't have to know how. Come on, come on, sir. Are you hearing me there, young man, young lady? You don't know, young man, young lady, too. <laughs> you don't have to know how. You don't even have to have the skill. Because you've got God. Yes. Amen. And all you have to have yes. is a Lord, I'm going to believe you yes. and I'm going to trust you yes. to walk me through this. Yes. And so it attached to that. And so and when you do that, you're positioned yes. to stand. Yes. Hallelujah. And it's important that this next point is also important. See, so we talked about. Uh, submission and obedience. We, we, we talked about rejecting sin, you know, and we talked about faith, but here's another, the fourth point I want to make to you is perseverance. Perseverance. Perseverance is important. Let me tell you why. The devil's strategy, listen, listen to this, the devil's strategy of resistance and discouragement is designed to weaken our resolve. I, I said this to you before. Our adversary knows that Jesus has given us victory. He just want, wants us to back up off of what we have. Instead of standing our ground, he wants us to get, just get worn down enough that we just give ground. He, his, his strategy of, of continuing to resist. Anybody have ever felt the resistance of the enemy? It may look like sometimes, but you know, listen, listen, here, here we go. You know you're headed in the right direction. You know you're doing the right thing. You know you got, you know, this is a God thing, all those things. But yet you just keep running into the wall. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Now, some of it, it's life stuff, but also... What is the scripture that we don't war is not just about flesh and blood stuff. And so and he what he the resistance is designed. Listen, the resistance is designed. The discouragement, the frustration are designed to weaken your resolve and to get you to, to compromise. Yeah. 
to get you to settle for less than what's really yours. That's what Israel did. Is that scripture, I think it's in, in, in uh, Numbers or it's in uh, Joshua uh, there. And, and there were, uh, they, they got God from Abraham up through J Jacob, Isaac, Jacob, through Moses, told them, God said, I am giving you all the land. You are to displace because these, these nations will not worship me. They will not submit to me. You are, submit, you are to replace everybody. That's what he said. And boom. You know, don't you like it when you take a step of faith and it all works out right away? You know? And, and you, don't have to, you, don't have to have, you don't have to have perseverance. And every, you know, anybody have some, that period of time, I'm jumping up and down. Anybody have that period of time where you just get, were getting everything you asked for? And, and, everything, and all the stuff was getting moved out of the way. And you rebuked the devil and he left. Okay? But, 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 but listen, listen, listen. Listen. This is important. This is important. Uh, they, they, the, the scripture says that... Um, there are a group of people in the land who made up their mind they weren't leaving. And they kept resisting. And it also says that God let them be there on purpose to teach the people. And they even teach them how to fight. Ooh. To teach them warfare. But what they did, this one, this one tribe of people, they made a treaty with them. And you know what God says? Because you made a treaty with them, they will plague you for generations. Because you did. I didn't tell you. I didn't tell you to compromise with the devil. Hallelujah. But what does the, what does the word teach us here? Galatians. See, Here's, here's the encouragement from God's word. Don't become weary. Don't get weary with doing well. Don't get weary standing your place, persevering forward. Don't get weary. For at the proper time, you'll reap the harvest if you do not faint. So don't, don't get weary. Here's, a, here's another good one for us. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Mm. In Ephesians 6, verse 13. Glory to God. In Ephesians 6, 13, here's what it says. After you've done all you can to stand your ground. Tell somebody this is a mindset. After you've done all you can to stand your ground, keep standing. Keep standing. Lord, I, I, with your help, I'm not going to be moved. I'm, I, I'm standing. I'm standing. Why? Hallelujah. Here, here's some good news. Here's some real good news. See, here's a real good point for you to remember. This is why you need to do this. Here's another side of, because nobody signed, we don't sign up for resistance. We like quick answers. I said, I, we said that. But guess what? Resistance is for you. It's not just against you. Learning how to persevere is important. Because, see, your assignment, the, the fact that God has positioned you, it's important that you know how to persevere. When he puts you there on your job, in your neighborhood, you are, you, like I said, you're his light. You're, you're his agent of life. You're the one he wants to make an impact and to bring his love and light into the dark places, the hopeless places of the world, which is your neighborhood, where you work, where you go to class, where you are in the dorm. And when you go in there, you're going in there also, not just to bring his light and his love. You're going in there on a spiritual led rescue mission. A rescue of redemption. I've talked to you about this before. In, you know, in 2 Corinthians 5 or 6, he says, you, I have given you the ministry, the anointing of reconciliation. 
And you have to have perseverance. So when things aren't going well, stop wanting to get out of the valley so quickly. I don't want, to, don't, you don't want to stay any longer than God, but some, one of the reasons you might, might be there. See, if, listen, 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 listen. See, trials and difficulties help you actually listen to how great this is. Trials and difficulties actually help you develop endurance. They develop. Here's what the word of God, James 1, 3. And here it says, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Yeah. That's a wonderful thing. It's not fun. It's not pleasant. But I'm receiving the, the enemies resist. See, he loses. That means he's double losing. You know, the thing he means to defeat me is actually developing me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So here's what. So here's here's my solution, because I know my strength is limited. OK, so here's my solution. I have two scriptures to help me. One is Hebrews 416, paraphrasing, you know. And, 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 well, no, actually, I'm going to read that. Hebrews 4, 16. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. Yes. There, somebody say there, there. We will find or we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it first. I need to get in the practice of running in God. Lord, I feel overwhelmed. I feel like I'm, I'm going to, but I'm running into you to give me the grace, to give me the strength to stand, to, to, keep, to keep my position, Lord. Are you hearing me? And here's, a, here's another one, real simple. Isaiah 40, 31. Okay? Isaiah 40, 31. You want to read that? But those who wait for the Lord. But look what they have. This is the amplified version. Look at what it has in the, in the parentheses. Who, those who wait. What does waiting look like? So, I'm, Lord, I'm, I'm going to wait. It's not, again, this is one of those times when the resistance doesn't seem like there's any movement and I got to keep standing, okay? Uh, but I'm standing who expect, look for, and hope in him, his ability to make it happen. will gain new strength. And renew their power. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God. Are you hearing me? Amen. Hallelujah. Like eagles rising toward the sun, they will run and not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. Hallelujah. Perseverance. Last point. Last point. Character. 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 Character is important if we're going to stand. Here's what Dr. Edmund Chan, pastor and author, writes about character. Character is formed in us as Christ is formed in us. So with that in mind, our desire should be, Lord, I want Christ-likeness. Lord, produce Christ-likeness in me. Produce the mind of Christ. That's, a, that's in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. I want your mind. Because if I have your mind, your way of thinking and perspective, if I have your, if your, if your character and nature, then I'm going to have character. I don't need good, hum listen to me. I do not need, you do not need good human character. If human character was good enough, we would not have needed the cross. Okay. Okay? But I need, I need godly character. You know why it's important? Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen. 
Listen, authority without character is dangerous. We, we are living in a world where we see, we, are we seeing it all the time? We're seeing people in authority who do not, sometimes who do not have character. We see it, we're seeing it in government. I mean, we're getting ready to go on an election and who has character? Who? I, I mean, the last election, I was never so sad ever. I'm telling you the truth. So I'm not looking forward to the election, but I thank the Lord we have the right to elect. But I, I didn't say, Lord, I'm, I'm going to be unhappy no matter which way I vote. And we have leaders, but, not, but listen, we're not just exempt. The, the government is not just in the body of Christ. We see authority without character. We, we, we look in, you can look across the board, where character in this day is at a premium. Are you hearing me? But here's the good side. Here's the good part. When you purpose to let Jesus to produce his character in you, when your aim is godly character, it will produce godly fruit. Amen. Are you hearing me? Godly. Here's what the, the fruit found in Galatians chapter five. And, and I also, if you look in Colossians chapter three and places like that, Godly character produces holiness, righteousness, but also love. We are in a world that needs love. Godly, godly character will help you love better. It produces joy, not only personal joy, but joy that gets poured onto other people. It produces peace. Oh, we just start. I started off sharing with you today, talking about the fact that we, you're, you're, the atmosphere that you find God has placed you in is an atmosphere where so many people lack peace. But because you're letting God's character work in you, you become a purveyor of peace. You become a conduit of peace. Are you hearing me? Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, compassion, forbearance, forgiveness. And there's more, there's more. But here, here's why, what I think is important. Listen, God can trust people with these character traits. He can trust people with these character traits with his authority. And in a day when I say being positioned to character, godly character will help you stand in the days of deception against all the forces that will want to push against you and knock you back, character helps you stand. Amen? I want to be a man of godly character. And I want you to be a people uh, of godly character. Godly character is willing to take the long way around. Godly character is willing to deny, to deny itself and, and be willing to um, have to be patient. Because so, when it says patience there, it's like, oh, it they're not talking about five-minute patience. But it's, it's the kind of patience that allows you to be inconvenienced by people or by life and still keep a good attitude. I like that. I, I, that's not original. That's in uh, Colossians chapter 3, I think, around 11. Or so where it talks, it lists some of the characteristics, some of the, and, and it's in the Amplified. Look it up. Okay? Would you stand on your feet with me? Oh, um, I, I, I thank God for just being able to tell you this again and again. Um, because I, I, I believe he, uh, in the day, uh, he's igniting Pastor, Ver, uh, Pastor Vernon, Pastor Ephraim. He's igniting a people. He said he's setting up, going to be setting up a, a people on fire. 
to set the places around them on fire for him. And he's put, he has set you, okay? Some of you, students, a little bit more temporarily. Some of us, more permanently. But he has set you as agents of light and love yes. to impact where you are. Over the mountain. You know? In the engineering department. Are you hearing me? In admissions. You know, or students affairs, whatever it is. But I thank you, Lord. Over there, uh, you know, with the football team. Amen. With the wives of the football players in, in the school district. So, Father, I thank you for your glorious hand down there with all that technology. Amen. Smart as the computers, I tell you. I'm tell you. Uh, with the hundreds of young people walk through your business every day. And they're getting food, but they don't have any direction in their life. Positioned to stand and to make an impact for Jesus. So Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in our lives and how you're positioning us. Uh, and, and Lord, in it, 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 so many wonderful ways. And so we appreciate what you're doing and we receive what you're doing. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you will help us to live and to surrender ourselves to you, to live submissive and obedient to you. You will position us, Lord, to reject sin. You, even now, as I'm praying, you see if there's someone who's struggling in an area of sin. But I thank you, Lord, that even as the uh, elders come and they're going to be here positioned for prayer. If you may need air, prayer because you're struggling with sin. At home, you may need prayer because you're struggling with sin and you want to get free from that bondage. Uh, and we're here to pray for you. But believe God that he can. He, he, Jesus died for you to be free. And so that, that may be. But maybe it's faith. But I thank you. I thank you that you're positioned in faith. Just use the faith. Don't look at Moses' faith. Don't look at one of the brothers. Just, just say, Lord, I want you to grow my faith. Amen. I want you to grow my faith. Perseverance. Lord, give me that. that. I, I want to be a spiritual bulldog, Lord, for you. I want to grab hold and not let go for you. Oh, Lord, produce your character. I, I, I need character. Produce your character in me, Lord. I receive it. Right now, if you don't know Jesus, yeah, I, I want to open up that, the altar for, for your relationship with Jesus. If you don't have him as your personal savior, right now, just come. Come here or, or online if you're there virtually. Understand God has all these things for you too. And if you need to reach out, if you have questions, just reach out. Go into the, uh, the, where it says uh, accepting Jesus, if you want to receive Jesus. But maybe if you even you just want to be able to write a question. Just go to that area. There's a space for you to write in, write your question or your prayer request. And we'd be so honored to pray for you or to try to give you an answer from the Lord. Look at somebody as we get ready to close. Tell them you are. You are. An agent. An agent. Of God's light. Of God's light. And love. And love. Strategically planted by God. To make an impact for him. To make an impact. Now just say this one last thing as we get ready to close. Tell him, go for it. Go for it. Go God bless you today.
Praise the Lord. Are you encouraged today? You encouraged to go for it? Allow God to build that, char that godly character in you? Have a, a changed heart, a changed mind, being transformed by the renewing of your mind? Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Many years ago, God gave me a vision of myself. And um, I really didn't know how, how I was going to get there. How do I get to be that person? And I saw myself. I remember I, had, I was on the pulpit, and I was walking over there, and I said, who is she, and how do I get there? But God gave me a vision of myself. And I'm sitting here, God says, you're becoming the vision of what I've called for. And it's taking dying, breaking, hard times. And I felt the Lord was saying to say today. See, I was in prayer. Go before God. He wants to hear you. Oftentimes we're waiting for somebody else to tell us what God has for us. But we all are so important. Gab, yeah, I didn't know. I mean, I knew this person was beyond me. But I was there right then. God said, you're becoming that person. Because I want to be sold out for God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. You need to go before God. The Lord said, I would that all prophesy. That you can go there and hear God, your Savior, your friend, the creator of the universe, and he'll show you. God had to break stuff down. He might have to break pride down. You know, self-centeredness. Whatever it is, but God loves you. I just felt the heart of God. <laughs> and I tell you, um, I just never forgot that vision. And sometimes I can be a little forgetful at times, but in Jesus' name, I claim my complete. I've always been that way. That's my kids say, Mom, you've always been like that. But I stood there right there, and God says, you're becoming. And I didn't know how. Candy, I didn't know. How do I get there? Because when you, I was young, sometimes we think we just know it. The older I'm getting it, I'm not, I don't know nothing. I'm so dependent on the Holy Spirit. I'm so needing Holy Spirit. There's a place God is trying to take us. That we're not just religious. But that we abide in God. Abiding in him. Where he can break down those attitudes or, you know, maybe a little jealous in you. Maybe whatever. There's nothing he won't break down. Hallelujah. Because he has the vision for you. And so you have to call on him if you really want what pastor is saying. Because there's a, there's a beautiful place for you and your call and what God is calling for. And I just felt the Holy Spirit say, tell them. You don't need Sister Sharon or Dr. Dre or Sister Vicki to tell you what the Lord is. We just want a word. The word is nigh unto you. As you draw, as we draw close to him, God is calling for people that will abide in him. Abide in him. Bring what you got. It may not be much. I was one of the most inconsistent people. I feel like I was on a roller coaster in my life. Hallelujah, bless the Lord. But just come. I just feel him. I get real, when I start talking, I get so excited. I'm not fussing or anything, but it's just, I just feel the love of God extended to his children, his sheep. He said, there's nothing, there's nothing. I am overwhelmed with what God, and you're just going to have to live along. You'll look back and you're like, whoa, Lord. God wants to give you a promise for yourself, for your family. 
I, my Lord, I was telling the, 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 um, the readers last night that my family was falling over dead. I was put in the hospital from November until April. I've said that before, but I just want to make this point. Sometimes you got to, some God, God will take you where you're by yourself because he wants to be found. And in that time, Alana, I was so happy. I was like, I was really, now I can believe I'm in isolation. I'm just in a praise the Lord. But God spoke to me. But then a burden. Then what God did, he put a burden on me. A burden on my family. It was so heavy. And I said, how can I, Christina, how can I be so happy in here? And I was only 23 years old. I was young. How can I be so happy in here? Are you doing something? Hallelujah. God must going to be ready to do something, honey. There's some releases that are coming. Haramo Shandai. You're not going to be recognizable when God, hallelujah, you're not, going, you're not called to be a woman of timidity, but one of power. And as God, he will humble. You stay before the Lord. I wish I had somebody to tell me that when I was 23. Hallelujah. The burden fell on me. There's nothing God can't do. And God spoke to me and said, if you will sing for me, if you will minister for me, not another person in your family is going to die without coming to know me. And literally, I'm 73. How old am I? 73. Okay. <laughs> Saints, not a, one person in my family has died yet without coming to God. My own father, who I did not know, God sent that man to my house. Didn't know he'd never seen my family, never nothing. God brought him into our home to live, and he was 89 years old. He should have been dead by 89, right? A lot of people are dead before 89. But he came to my house from Mississippi and was dropped off there, and pastor led him to the Lord. There's no promise when confusion is all around, son. Hallelujah. God sees you in a crowd. And sometimes the pressures are heavy. But God is going to lift. There's a lifting coming. Young people, there's a lifting coming. There's a lifting coming. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. But God is saying, I love you. And I want to show you. It's not for a select one or two or three. It is you. My sheep hear my voice. He cleanses our motivations for doing stuff, whatever. But it's all just surrender, saying yes to God. So now, hey, Vincent, I'm becoming the person that God showed me in 1980-something. I'm like, how do I get there? Dying is not easy. When God wants to say, look, that is you. This is you. You look at it. Let him ball that dross up. Let him clean it out. Because you are gold in the rough. You're diamonds in the rough. Hallelujah. And I just know, Holy Spirit, God is going to work. This is God's ministry. And when we were conceived, God had to plan for us to be here. When you were conceived... God had purpose for you. So I'm just saying, really? Just go to him. And you can be honest with him. If I'm alive, we all can make it. Because I was always real honest. If I was upset, I was like, one oh, hour. If I've been able to, st <laughs> I'm telling you, we all can make it. God's got something special, but he wants you to see. What do you have? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you are somebody, somebody precious, somebody great. So God said, I'm going to give you a vision. If you seek him, he will be found. You might be coming with the wrong motivation in seeking him. God wants to turn some things totally around. 
He did it for me. Angie, he did it for me. He turned it around, but it starts with surrender. It starts with me saying, God, I need you, and ain't nothing going to get right. And you know, I didn't have, it's something. You've got people to tell you these things. We had to go up the, Pastor, I, it's really funny. I, I'm going to say one more thing, then I, I probably won't speak for another four weeks. But, <laughs> but no, no, and, but I'm going to say, I know we got to stop, but this is, this is important. God showed me another vision. And we, I had this machete in my hand. And I was before a jungle. And I was just cutting, cutting, cutting down through the jungle. And I remember I was bleeding. It seemed like I didn't have shoes on, like I may have been somewhere in an African jungle. And I'm just cutting. And then it got where I had to go uphill cutting. I got, finally got to the top. And I'm ready to cross on over. Braylon, I'm ready. Okay. I'm scratched. I'm sweaty. I'm, I had cut down, huh? Oh, yeah. I'm scratched. I was bleeding. But I was happy to go. And I got there and God said, no. Wait a minute. Turn around. Somebody have cut a path for you to walk on. Somebody didn't have anybody to tell them how. How do I do this? If you will rely on Holy Spirit, if you will rely on Holy Spirit, some people have tread a path for you. It may be a little bumpy. It may not be all smooth yet. But he says, no, turn around. Folks was following, and I had to help them over. I had to help them over. Hallelujah. Please, please trust what I'm saying this morning. If you call on God, if you really want to get close to God, everybody doesn't want to. But I thank God. You know, Angie, I thank God. Jesus is all I had. And look what he did. He gave me a good husband. He gave me children when the doctor said, ain't nothing going to happen. I have a little granddaughter who led, was in the worship praise group today. He'll give you really what's in your heart. He'll give you a vision you beautiful young lady right here. He'll give you a vision for your life. You don't have to recreate the wheel. Because God has your number. And he wants to do something glorious. So get a vision. He'll show you. You'll be in prayer and he'll show you. So that's what he's saying. We need to pray. Don't fool yourself. I'm not telling you go 14,000. Sometimes I'm just washing dishes and praying. Sometimes I'm down washing the clothes, communicating. So in a way, God, I thank you for a vision of the lives of your people. I thank you, God, that we are rejecting sin. We're rejecting attitudes. And we're saying, God, what is your plan for my life Show us, oh God. Show us your way. Oh God, we need you today. We thank you, God, for just moving by your power, by your might. Oh Lord, hallelujah. We thank you for your promise. And God, for those who may not have a promise, give them a promise that they can hold on to. And let us go believing, knowing that God, you will do. <laughs> you can't help but do what you want to do. Help us to have that faith. In the name of Jesus, we love you. Guide us. Oh, great Jehovah. Oh, God, we thank you. That every person under the sound of my voice will go to you and receive vision 
for themselves, for their children, for whomever, in Jesus' name. Because, God, you want to produce what you promised in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Those of you who desire prayer, please come up front. And everyone else, please make quietly leave the sanctuary and make your way down to the multipurpose room for um, our finance meeting. God bless you. We love you. And we pray God's best for you this week. In Jesus' name, amen.